A Meditation on John For three years we have been a band of brothers. We have lived together, worked together, prayed together. We've done everything, together. But not today. My brothers have all gone, and so I stand alone, wretched and hopeless, watching as Jesus dies on the cross. He said this would happen. He said we would all run away and desert him, that the sheep of the flock would be scattered. Of course, we all denied it. We were wounded that he could even think such a thing after everything we'd shared together, after all that he meant to us, knowing deep in our souls that he really was the Son of God. Of course we'd never abandon him, never. But we did, in more ways than one. We went to Gethsemane. The others sat down together, but Jesus asked Peter, James and I to go a little further into the garden with him. He was overcome with grief in the garden, the sorrow of what was to come absolutely crushing him. We're his, we are his friends. We saw his pain, yet we abandoned him. We slept as he cried, as he prayed, as he asked that his cup of suffering be taken from him. We slept. The pain of that knowledge wounds me to the core. We slept. And then the crowd came with swords and clubs and Judas, our brother, who also abandoned Jesus, but sealed with a kiss of treachery. In reckless bravery, Peter did strike out, but there were simply too many of them. And anyway, Jesus shouted out for the fighting to stop, and it did. But what did we do next? I and my faithful band of brothers? We ran, we ran like the wind, and we left him. When we could run no more, Peter and I stopped, listening breathlessly with such fear to see if we'd been followed, to see if we too would be arrested and taken away, tortured or killed. Fear overwhelmed us. I cannot explain to you that feeling of fear. Jesus had once called my brother James and I men of thunder, there was no thunder in me then. But Peter and I knew that we'd got to go back. We had to know what had happened to him, what would happen to him. And so eventually we made our way back, in the darkness, in the shadows, to the home of Cephas, where they'd taken him. I know Sarah, Cephas' servant, and she let me into the courtyard, whilst Peter stayed outside by the gate. Jesus was in the courtyard, surrounded by men. I hurriedly went back for Peter, but when we returned, Jesus and the men had gone inside. There was a fire in the courtyard where the servants and guards were warming themselves. I stood, waiting and watching for Jesus, but Peter went over to the fire. Sarah asked him if he was a disciple of Jesus. I heard Peter say, no. And when the others began to question him too, I heard him say, no, no, I'm not. The cock crowed and Peter, his face a mask of despair, ran from the courtyard out into the night. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where my brothers were, but I knew where the women were staying. I knew where Mary, Jesus' mother, was staying. And I also knew that I had to tell her. Tell her that as his friend, as his beloved friend, I, along with all the others, had deserted him and he'd been captured. 
Early the next morning we tried to find Jesus, Mary, me and the other women. Instead we found a huge crowd outside the praetorium, shouting and frenzied, wide-eyed with anger, the anger growing minute by minute, fuelled by the chief priests and the temple guards. Kill him, they whispered. Crucify him, they whispered. And the crowd roared out to Governor Pilate, Kill him, crucify him. And I prayed with all my heart, with all my strength, that he would be released, that somehow he could escape this, that he would be restored to us. I could do nothing but pray. But Pilate handed Jesus over to be crucified, whilst the mob cheered on. In the numbness of shock, the women and I followed the crowd to Golgotha, still hoping for a miracle, still hoping that God would intervene, despite all Jesus had told us. What else could we do? What else could we feel? We love him desperately, so how can we possibly bear this? I couldn't watch what happened next. I screwed my eyes tight shut and turned away, but could still hear the jeers, the abuse, the insults, the shouts of pain, the crying. But I couldn't abandon him again. And so now, here I stand, alone, still wretched, still hopeless, still watching Jesus dying on a cross. It's nearly noon and the sky is grey, as grey as my heart. Suddenly I'm no longer alone. The women are beside me. Mary holds on to me but says nothing. She and I draw closer to the cross, to the man we love, and as we do so he calls out. He calls to us, He is your son. And she is your mother. We hold tighter onto one another. We cry and we pray for the end to come.